time to play some World of Warcraft. And look, we're in classic! Except, obviously, got 169 hours to go <laughs> before we can play classic. So, welcome to the stream where I sit here and, and stare at this enter world button for a full 169 hours. Um, I hope you're ready for this, uh, because I sure am. No, I just want to show off uh, the characters I made. You know. Um, because you're allowed to make three characters at a minute. Um, you can basically reserve your name, but what I find funny is the way they uh, worded this post. They said you can you can fucking reserve your name, but I'm just thinking like you can't reserve your name without creating a character with that name. They should have said you can create your character, because that would have made people I think a little bit more excited. But it doesn't matter, everyone's already excited, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Moot point, but yeah. I've gone over this in other streams, so I'll just very quickly go over this guy. I typically play a Night Elf Druid, uh, Balanced Druid, but Balanced Druids are shit in Classic, so I've made the decision to hop over to Human Mage, because you can't be a Night Elf Mage until Cataclysm. And I made this guy, and I used to think humans were the most boring ass characters, uh, but I don't know, I feel like I've, I've come to appreciate them for what they are, and I made this guy, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing him. Also, since it was early on in the name reservation, I decided to get two names, which uh, both relate to things that either came out or that I would have been, you know, reading or watching around a period of WoW Classic, but names I would normally never be able to get because, uh, I don't know, other people also have that idea. Oh my god, look at his hands, I've just realised his hands are so triangular. Uh, <laughs> so we've got Vancha, uh, who is a Night Elf Hunter. He, he was originally going to be my blue haired. Uh, he was going to have the classic appearance of what my Night of Druid used to have, but I decided against that because I thought I might make a Night of Druid anyway. So this is Vancha, he is a reference to the Cirque de Freak Young Adult book series written by Darren Shan. There is a character in that series called Vancha March and I always pictured him as a Night Elf when I was reading the series. Um, yeah, I guess because I was playing, I mean... <laughs> I read the series around like maybe 2007, but I was also playing WoW for the first time around 2007, so I don't know. I just associate the two. And this is kind of what I always imagined his Night Elf form looking like in my in my mind. Like I didn't think he would look like the blue haired character I made. Uh, I just thought always thought he would have like the long green hair and stuff like that. And I guess Hunter is the closest you can really get um, to his character style from the books. But also, I'm really interested in Vanilla Hunters, so I'm gonna see what that's like. Because they look like they're a massive pain in the ass, but in an interesting kind of way. Uh, and if that doesn't embody the spirit of classic, I don't know what else does. Also Zangetsu, uh, because I'm a fucking weeb. This is Zangetsu. Um, he is named after the main character of an anime uh, called Bleach. His sword is called Zangetsu. Um, this is as close as I could get to what Zangetsu actually looks like. I don't know if him being a paladin really makes sense. I mean, he is a sword. You start off with a big old mallet, but I mean humans get sword specialization, so I'll be using swords anyway. I don't even know if I'll be playing much paladin. Uh, like I said many times over, uh, classic isn't really something that's friendly to Waltz because you need to put so much time into one character, but I figured I'd make them while the name grabbing was going good. But now I'm going to swap over to the live game, uh, so bear with me for two minutes while I do that, and we'll figure out something to do there. But yeah, I'm. Oh, they've done this really mean theme thing. They've put uh, World of Warcraft Classic uh, on the launcher. A really nice classic looking picture. Um, oh, that's interesting. It's, okay, OBS counts this as being the same kind of thing. Let's just play my main character. Why not? I know we were doing the gearless leveling thing, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. But yeah, I guess this is still WoW.exe according to OBS. It's not ready yet. I haven't logged in in about a week or two. So yeah, also you get to see the clusterfuck that is my interface. It's basically just the vanilla one except I've jammed freaking <laughs> jammed recount down here. Uh, what's my f missions doing? Cool, I mostly just do reputation on the mission boards. Um, if I'm honest, I know I should probably be getting my eyes right up. I'm probably quite far behind on the whole 
as a right gear thing, but I haven't really been playing much uh, retail lately, if I'm honest. I was playing Final Fantasy, wasn't I? So I kind of uh, rolled over onto that. But yeah, I guess I'll just do some world quests. Uh, probably more Admiralty. Just, yeah, I guess I'll just do some world quests. I've also been considering playing Diablo 3. Um, just because there's a new season out and it's been a while since I played Diablo but I'm in a weird kind of place with that where I'm in the middle ground of I kind of want to play Diablo but at the same time it's not really been long enough since I last played Diablo for me to be interested in it again if you know what I mean so I'm kind of like interested but not really if that makes sense which I don't think it does but you know whatever Gamescom happened didn't it uh, I mean, it's happening for like five days, whatever, over in Germany. Should probably give my guild some privacy. <coughs> um, and I kind of hoped that we'd get Halo Reach uh, Master Chief Collection release date, but I mean, it kind of makes sense that we didn't. They've been going on about beta testing that for a while. Oh, that's nice, Magni. Thanks for letting us know about that. Um, <laughs> Fucking get that fucking dwarf out of here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so obviously there's no Halo Reach announcement, which is fine. Uh, I wasn't going in there like, there better be a Halo Reach announcement. And um, speaking of people who are like that, good lord, don't look at the chat. <laughs> Never look at the chat. That's something I've uh, I've learned. I decided to just hide the chat this time. Normally, when there's a live event on for something like that, I oh, have they patched this? Last time I did this, I had absolutely no trouble just swooping in and collecting this and flying off again. I think they've given these guys a range spell that they didn't used to have. Alright, fine, I'll play your game, Blizzard. Literally. I'll play your actual game. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense there's no... Well, that's a bit forgiving. Uh, it makes sense that there's no kind of release really date for Halo Reach. Because they've said time and time again, but it's ready when it's ready kind of thing. Like, in a strangely Blizzard style mentality. Could you die a bit more quietly? Um, but what we did get is, uh, we got some Death Stranding stuff. I'm not really that interested in Death Stranding. I don't understand all the hype around it, but... I mean, I'm happy it was there because people seem to like it. Uh, we got... I'm trying to remember. Kind of going backwards in order, we got some Modern Warfare. They're doing a beta weekend on PlayStation 4. Not beta, alpha weekend on PlayStation 4. Um, I might give that a shot, I don't know. I hardly touch Call of Duty games. I think the one I've played the most was probably Black Ops on PS3. Probably played about 20 hours of the multiplayer. Like, that's the extent of what I've done. But I mean, it's fun enough. Uh, I did that remaster, Modern Warfare remaster stream, didn't I? Uh, I might give it a shot, I don't know. It depends what I'm doing that weekend. I didn't actually pay attention to when the weekend was. <laughs> you know, I've been wondering if I should just freaking stream. Like, I wouldn't be able to upload the VOD, I doubt, but, uh, like, just stream, for instance, ceremonies like that, like the opening ceremony to freaking Gamescom. I can put sentences together today really well. Um. But yeah, just like restream it and like commentate over it. Like, I don't. Thing is, though, thing is with that, I don't know if anyone would be interested in watching that. And if I can't upload it as a VOD, what's the point, really? And I doubt I'd be able to upload it as a VOD because, you know, it's not exactly my content. Um, I don't know. I need to look into stuff like that. But I think it could be cool. I'm always on the lookout to add some kind of reactionary or discussion style content to what I do like I'm always going on about making some kind of podcast based around like having watched a series or a movie with someone else and then just relaying our thoughts back I feel like a live version of that could be interesting with uh, game announcements but I've gone off track <laughs> oh this isn't a Gamescom announcement but it happened during Gamescom fucking Sony acquired Insomniac um, the developers of my I don't even know if I can say my favourite single player game series anymore because a long time's passed, but one of my most beloved single player game series, Ratchet and Clank. They also did Spyro, which was a big part of my childhood. They also did Ratchet and Clank, 
which was that uh, fucking already said that, and they also did um, uh, Spider Man, which probably I mean I played it this year and it's probably my game. Was it this year? Fuck, was it this year or last year? I don't remember. I don't need to be so cautious about killing these guys. Um, if I played it this year, it's probably my game of the year that I've played this year. I do that differently to people. I don't do it based on when games are released, I do it based on when I played them. Um, but yeah, so Sony bought them, and I kind of assumed Sony already owned them uh, before they released Sunset Overdrive. So I was like, I mean, that's just something I always assumed. And then when Sunset Overdrive came out, shut up, Mike. Um, I was like, oh, I guess I guess they don't own them. And then I kind of forgot about that, and then went back to assuming that they owned them. And now they actually own them, and that's the end of that conversation. Uh, no, um, I'm 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 I don't know whether to be that excited or whether I should just not really pay much attention to it. The reason I'm excited is because I'm fairly sure back along, and I tweeted about this. They said that they didn't have control over whether Ratchet and Clank Trilogy got released onto PS4, which is something I really want, um, because Sony held the publishing rights, and uh, they wouldn't. Uh, Insomniac wouldn't be the ones remastering it. I mean, they're already reimagining it. Why would they then go ahead and remaster the old version? <laughs> um. But I don't know if this would affect that at all, if they'd have like a stronger voice over what happens to their to the IP that they made, or whether that means they would actually have less of a voice over it, or if it doesn't affect it at all. Basically I just want Ratchet and Clank 1, 2 and 3, and uh, Gladiator deadlocked in America on PS4 so I can stream it. That's all I want. Um, oh, and Spider-Man 2 of course. And also I want them to make a sequel to the reimagined Ratchet and Clank, uh, because... If they reimagined the second game like they did the first with the levels and everything, I think like the story would probably require a major overhaul based on what they did to the first one. Uh, but I would probably die of happiness. Just, I mean, I don't know. That being said, it's not like the PS4 Ratchet and Clank game is my favorite. It's definitely the most uh, good-looking one. Like when I saw freaking Novalis, I, I was really happy with that. Um, but then, I don't know, gameplay wise, it was great. Like, it was really good gameplay, there was nothing to complain about, but for some reason Ratchet & Clank 2 and A Crack in Time are my favourite Ratchet & Clank games, and that they kind of stick out in my mind for reasons that that one doesn't. I don't know. I feel like I'm asking, like, a fucking genius to make another masterpiece instead of just another amazing piece of art. <laughs> like, jeez Christian, what more do you want? What am I doing here? Talk to the pingling sl Oh, the sledding one, of course! Uh, at the top of the hill, right? Oh, he takes you up there. Okay. Or she. Hi! Off I go. I mean, oh, that was optional. Okay, we're gonna sit through this now. What else happened at Gamescom? I'm probably going over all the talking points I could be using for tomorrow's weekly deathmatch, but oh well. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'll probably form these thoughts into more of a cohesive uh, narration tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm all over the place at the minute. Alright, let's do this. I haven't done this in a while, so... Okay, you just steer him. Cool, good to know. Is there a yeti chasing me? What? Oh, was I supposed to speed him up somehow? Maybe I should pay attention to what I'm doing. Oh, you know what I have not done? I haven't done Wings 2 and 3 of the Eternal Palace on Raid Finder, and sadly, yes, that's the only way I raid. <laughs> I know, I'm scum. Uh, so I'm going to queue for Depths of a Devoted. It'll take like half an hour anyway. Um, how the fuck... There's no buttons to speed him up. What am I supposed to do? Am I hitting rocks or something? Penguin, tell me. Oh, I hit a snowball on the track. Okay, got it. Dodge him. Oh boy. Why does this music remind me of Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> Am I the only one getting that? Getting that vibe? Oh no. Oh, Mr. Yeti, please do not eat me. There we go. 
what on earth happened at Gamescom? I feel like I'm missing some pretty major, major things that happened. My brain's just stalling at a minute, is all. Um, ah, oh, you know what? Let's just do this one. I always avoid the gold giving ones because what's the point <laughs> of getting 161 gold? Gold's kind of pointless. Blizzard have a history of that in their games, gold being a little bit pointless later on in their game cycles. Like Diablo 3, what's the point of gold? What is the point of gold in Diablo 3? They could remove gold, I don't think it would really affect much. Obviously they'd have to change a couple of things, but... Unless they there's something that they changed that I don't remember. Um, <laughs> I keep forgetting to talk about Gamescom, which I said I was going to do in the title of this stream. Alright, oh this one's going to be really easy with flying. Oh, oh no! <laughs> okay, I guess that's how we're doing this. I should be quite high up and then... I'm out of range. Oh no. <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh... Oh by the way, I was playing No Man's Sky earlier today and it crashed and I lost like half an hour of progress so... I haven't touched it since. <laughs> Uh, games come. Oh, Gears of War. Okay, I can talk about that. Gears of War is a game series which has completely passed me by for the fairly obvious reason that I've never owned an Xbox. Um, and I kind of want to try it. But uh, Game Pass on PC has the remastered edition of the first game, and then it has the fourth and the fifth game. Well, it'll have the fifth game soon. Um, I think their messaging on that's been a bit weird. Um, does that not count? Right. Um, so, yeah. So I don't know whether to just play the first one, or whether the fourth one is a good jumping-on point, uh, or to just play the fifth one and not worry too much about the story. I imagine that last option is the worst option. Uh, but it looks like, from all the footage I've seen and over the years as well, it looks like a decent game. Like, and I looked up reviews for the fourth one because for some reason I had it in my head that Gears of War Four was badly received, but apparently it was not. Uh, so, I don't know what's going on with that. Alright, let's do this one and then we're going to Storm Song Valley. Um, but yeah, so Gears 5 looks really good. And the reason why, well, apart from the fact that it looks good, one of the reasons why I've been interested in that series for so long is because, from what I can tell, and I might be wrong, but basically a lot of the developers who created Unreal Tournament uh, which is a game series that I love quite a lot. Uh, it's my arena shooter of choice. It was my first ever first person shooter. Oh, stay on track. Uh, <laughs> um, fucking, I'm so bad at keeping one, one fucking train of thought going. Uh, yeah, they seem to be the people, the people who made Unreal Tournament, they kind of went off and they formed a different studio that Microsoft acquired, and they're the people who make Gears of War, from what I can tell, apart from Cliff Blazinski who left after, like, Gears 3, I think. Um, that's what I can tell, I might be wrong, but it seems like, from the footage I've seen of those games as well, like, you know when you see a game by a developer that's a completely different IP from another game they've done, you can tell it's still made by the, those people. Like, you can tell that Ratchet & Clank was made by the people who made Spyro, because, like, it's got staples, you can see instead of collecting gems you collect bolts, but it's very similar in the way that works and all that kind of stuff. It's, I feel that way about Unreal Tournament's Gears of War. Like, Unreal Tournament is obviously an arena shooter, while Gears of War is a cover shooter with, like, a story and everything, but just the way the characters are designed and the voices sound and it all seems very similar so I've always been a bit like I should probably try those games out I would probably like them also they seem to be doing and I don't know if this is just something they've always done but they seem to be doing a bunch of multiplayer modes which aren't just kill the other people and I've noticed Doom Eternal is doing that as well and I feel like a lot of games at the minute are just like experimenting with multiplayer and it's really nice to see. I feel like that kind of stopped being a thing and now it's being a thing again. It's nice to see that happen. I can sense Azarite nearby. Yeah, I know you can. Like, um, <laughs> I'm so mean to him. More life for a common. More life for a Cornish pasty. No, 
That's fine commands. Oh, does it? That's nice. Um, so what else happened? The new Need for Speed looks cautiously good, um, but here's the thing: I don't trust it because even though there's no loot boxes, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere. I'm sorry if this is incorrect, but I'm like 90% sure. Uh, I read somewhere that you will be able to buy time saving packs and most games that allow you to do that balance gameplay towards psychologically making you want to do that. In other words, being a massive grind unless you spend money in the game. Which is potentially more damaging to the base game than My loot boxes. Because while loot boxes are, you know, used My in manipulative ways and stuff like that. In a lot of games they are still separate. I'm not saying that's forgivable but in a lot of games they are still separate. Whereas this affects like the core gameplay. Because it's not just cosmetics. But I don't know, we'll have to see how it pans out. If Maybe it'll come out and I'll just wait and see what people say about it. But I can tell you it's the first Need for Speed game I've paid attention to in a long time. The last one I played and liked was the Most Wanted reboot. So even though the Most Wanted PS2 game was pretty good, I really liked the PS3 one as well. The online multiplayer on that was really good. Although the cars felt weird to drive, you kind of got used to it, but they felt different to how they normally do. I don't know how to explain it. So yeah, I'm keeping my eye on Need for Speed Heat. Also, it looks like they've got a story. And I know they'll always have a story, but uh, I don't care <laughs> about the story. Um, I don't think anyone goes to a Need for Speed game for the story, but you know. People put, you know, time and effort into it, so I guess I should experience it. Form an opinion based on the content and not on my <laughs> predisposed judgement of stories in uh, urban racing games. Anyway, I mean any racing game, Forza Horizon 4 is great but good lord I don't need the story for that game, go away. Give me the Lego themed stuff, yeah that's amazing but not the fucking story, uh, I'm okay without that. What else got announced? I feel like that presentation went on for like 3 hours and I remember like 20 minutes worth of stuff from it. Um, I'm just remembering the Nindy showcase that happened before it. Uh, that was full of lots of really interesting looking stuff. But I already tweeted about that. Basically, I don't remember the names of any of them. We're not going to talk about them because of that. Um, when the gold numbers been rising on the glacier, get up there and do something about that. I sure will. Um, don't tell them I'm not. I'm honestly trying to remember. Um, oh, uh, Destiny Shadow Keep. I don't feel like we got a whole lot of new information. I actually, I'm really fucking confused. I'll tell you that much. I'm really confused because Destiny Shadow Keep, you're on the moon, this hive. <laughs> That's the story. And then, and then they were like, oh, so you've got a big story reveal for us. What's going on with the story? And they were like, here's the cinematic. And then I Coral was like, Hey, this is why the Vex exist, and the Vex are up to no good again, so the Vex are the bad guys. And I was just like, no? <laughs> Moon's haunted. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> so I don't know if that's like a different thing for the annual pass people, or if it all ties together somehow. Maybe I haven't been following the game closely enough. I've kind of been keeping one eye on it, not two. Um, <laughs> but... I, I don't know. I was confused by that. Uh, but something I did find out... I'm trying to tell a good story if you'd stop talking over me. Uh, the one thing I did take away from that was that uh, the mods uh, that you put into guns are no longer consumables, they're collectibles. So you find it or you craft it or you buy it or whatever the fuck you do to get it. Um, and then I guess you've just got it and you can just switch it up on your guns as often as you like and they're being more creative with them and I think that's an awesome change and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, they also talked about some other stuff but I don't remember about anything else so <laughs> that's that one. Was there a Magni quest in this area? 
I thought there was. There was not. Oh well. Um, which world quest can I be asked to do? That's what it comes down to normally. Uh, Alright, we've got two left, so I'm going to kill this one, kill that one, and then we should hand in around there, and then go hand in the Tiragard one, and then go to the other continent to do whatever Magni wants me to do. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll... Kind of operating without a plan here, so take out this maybe we'll go back to... Gearless leveling? But then... I know, I'm queued for looking for aid. 53 minutes! Okay, we're not doing looking for aid. <laughs> Ooh! And you can queue for multiple wings at once, but on my first playthrough, I queue for one wing at a time so I can play it in order. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Scouts report that Wait, where the fuck is this guy? I don't care. Um, because he's not in here, and that's where it's telling me he is. So, this is one of those good old-fashioned World of Warcraft where the fucks. These happen a whole bunch. I remember I came over here to do a collectible thing. And there was an add-on I was using that showed me where it was on the map, and I got super confused and I couldn't find it. And it was some tiny tunnel entrance somewhere, and it took me ages to find. I really don't care. And uh, I've forgotten where it was, so maybe this world quest is not kind of operating without a plan here, so take out this threat and don't get killed. You're really trying my patience, <laughs> Calvin. Alright, maybe it's inside the cave, there's like an extra little droppy bit. Is there an extra little droppy bit? There's not an extra little droppy bit. Okay. I'm out of this place. I'm just gonna do this one and then that one. And then, nope, don't care, bye. <laughs> That's the main thing I'm gonna miss about being a night elf in classic. Not being able to just, I mean flying's not a thing, but like... Not being able to just shadow meld and creep away in cat form or something. I believe we should trade with people of all races. Oh, it's such a quality of life thing that I'm so used to because I normally play night elves. Alright, match two. See how good I am at this. Um, well, I could be good at this, but it would be boring because I would be focusing and not saying anything. So let's just keep going. Wait, was this a pearl? This was a pearl. Ooh. Can... Alright, never mind. I guess I'm focusing on us. I tried playing some Apex Legends solos earlier, and I had one game, and it was a really good game. And it was also really intense, and I was like, that game was so intense, I'm just gonna call it there. <laughs> Even though I had a good time. I mean, I came ape. It wasn't, like, intense because I was gonna win or anything. It's just intense because normally when I drop, I immediately die. And this time I didn't immediately die. It's like, whoa, a decent game! And I found two digital threats uh, within like two chests next to each other. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, Gamescom things. Pretty sure Jeff Keighley has a crush on Hideo Kojima, but who doesn't nowadays? Death Stranding looks as weird as normal. <laughs> I already talked about that, didn't I? How I don't really get the appeal of it. Um, stretching time. Uh, uh, FIFA 20, obviously, is a thing. Um, oh, they announced... They made a big deal about some game which was like... Oh, Comanche. It, it, I was like, what the fuck is this game? And then it showed a helicopter and they said the game was about helicopters. I said, game about helicopters? That's dumb. And they said it was called Comanche. I said, what the fuck's a Comanche? And they were like, so obviously this is a take on the classic game. I was like, oh, I think this is one of those uh, one of those instances where I'm too young to be in this room. <laughs> Which, you know, I have to say that those instances... Calvin, you said that last time. Um, I have to say those instances because I'm 24 now. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I remember... There being loads of references to things that I was too young to remember. Not so much these days. Not that I'm ancient, but, you know. Alright, where is Crush Station? He's probably down here. Why did I say his name like that? Coral's awake, chat. Cat's awake. 
Oi, don't scratch your ear. Come on. Be good to yourself. Um. Oh, uh, freaking Kerbal Space Program 2 got announced, which is cool. I never played the first one, but it had a really cool looking trailer. I don't know if it's indicative of what the game's actually going to look like, because at one point it said not actual gameplay footage, but then they didn't like make it clear if anything else was gameplay footage, and it looked like it transitioned. Um, but it looks really good. Like I've never played the original, but I've seen the graphics, and it's very much like this is a physics game, nothing much here to look at kind of thing. But yeah, You're I'm kind of on a space kill. binge anyway right now. I'm kind of on a space binge because I watched a documentary on BBC called Planets, uh, and it was really freaking good, and space is awesome. I have one more quest to do. I'm an idiot. Um, wait. Oh, there is a fucking Champions of Azeroth quest down here. Okay. Good to know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Kerbal Space Program 2 looks awesome. Also, uh, Jeff Keighley got on stage and he said, man, sometimes these indie developers come out of nowhere and I and they show me a trailer and this one really impressed me. And I want to see if it really impresses you. And I was watching the trailer, I was going, holy shit, this is really impressive. Just some random indie dev came up to you and showed you this. And then at the end it said, Everspace 2. And I was like, oh. Well, it's the other space devs. Obviously, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> you know, that shouldn't discount how amazing the trailer is, but I don't know. I guess he wasn't familiar with the first game. I mean, the trailer did look like a substantial improvement, though. And it looks like they teased um, a planet at the end, like fighting over the surface of a planet. Which is amazing, because they showed planets. Some Earth elementals have been infused. They showed planets um, as a part of the earlier part of the trailer, which I'm pretty sure aren't in the original Everspace game. I remember thinking, I want to go there, but this is an Everspace game, so there'd be no point of the planet actually being a full-size planet, which is a shame. Why have they put that in there? And then at the end they were like, because you can go down there. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, gonna keep an eye on that. I haven't actually played a lot of Everspace, I've played like maybe two hours of it. I really liked what I played, but it's one of those games where I stopped playing it for some reason, and next time I play it I'll probably be like, why the hell did I stop playing this? Uh... Bam. So yeah, that game looks good. Um, what else? I think that was pretty much most of it, right? Uh, I mean, there are a few things that I totally tuned out for because I just didn't care. Um, I think there was a game being made by some Bungie alumni. Um, I don't really remember... I mean, I think I was away from my keyboard for most of the time, so I didn't see the gameplay. I just heard them talking about it afterwards. Uh, but I think they said it, they were former Halo and Destiny devs, so I'm going to have to go and find a trailer for that. That would be cool. Man, I really want to stream Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> I wish it was on PS4. I could, here's the thing, right? I've thought about this before. Maybe I could get it on an emulator on PC and stream that. But in my experience, emulated games are notoriously unstable. Uh, I emulated Animal Crossing on GameCube, on a GameCube emulator, and that crashed a lot. And that's the same generation of... I mean, I should... I guess the generation of console doesn't matter because it's the architecture of the system that's being emulated that's probably causing that. But, I don't know. I need to try it out, I guess. Maybe I'll experiment, but I'm just iffy on emulators in general. The only game I've ever really enjoyed on an emulator has been Pokemon Fire Red. Like... Did I absorb the stuff from those guys? I don't think I did. Are their corpses still over there? Bother. Oh well. Um, Alright. I should be able to take you.
Yeah, I don't know. I might, I might test out an emulator. I just feel like most of the time there's something off, and you can kind of tell what it is. Like maybe the frame rate is running at like 92% or something, or like the game speed. I mean, not the frame rate. Um, but I don't know. Whenever you emulate a game, there's definitely something off about it. Maybe it's just psychological. And I'm being dumb, but I can't see myself emulating the game just to stream it. Back stream. I need a target. Out of range. It's a shame that Azerite is driving the elements out of control. More reason for us to be putting an end to it. And I'm back. Hi, it's me, Itty Boy. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, Wild Classic. Let's talk about that for a bit. So there's been some news. Um, basically, um, Blizzard are begging players. Alright, so this is the story to the extent that I know it. Uh, each region has two PvP servers and then they opened up a third one. Um, or I might have that wrong, it might be that EU only had one PvP server. But either way, it looks like streamers are choosing to stream on one of the PvP servers and everyone is flocking to the other PvP server to avoid them and because of that, um, <laughs> one of those PvP realms is massively overpopulated and I'll let you figure oh, out which happening. one. Um, I fucking love <laughs> that this is an issue. Um, not to make light of it for the people who it affects, but like... Wow, classic! Everything will be exactly the way it was, except you can't change the fact that streaming is a thing now, and that people can't stand streamers. <laughs> so the amount of people who can't stand streamers and don't want to play with them have cluttered up a realm, and they had to open up another realm and beg people to move their characters. Um, so clearly, that's just a very clear indication of the fact that even if a game is exactly the same, the context of a world that it's in is different, and therefore the game's going to be slightly different. Um, which is kind of fascinating to think about. If you're, if you're me anyway, and you think about those things. Uh, like the boring person that I am. <laughs> but, I don't know. It's just, every time I look at that launcher and it's just like, wow, classic in seven days. <sighs> I just want to play it now. <laughs> Um, also, I'm curious because they said seven days. I thought it was going to launch on a Tuesday, but obviously it's a Monday right now. So does that mean it's launching next Monday? If it is, I would extremely welcome that because that would mean... Is it on a calendar? It's not on a calendar. Because uh, that would mean that I can actually play it instead of going to work for second it launches. Although I imagine there'll be some server instability and so forth. I mean, it's a little worrying that they reopened the beta servers the to be like, actually, we need to do more testing. <laughs> Keep your powder dry. I try to, but the rain gets all over that thing. Um, let's go to Dirty Horde territory and do Dirty Horde things. Do -do 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 -do. Safe Fucking love Voldoon. Probably my favourite zone in this expansion outside of Nashatar. Speaking of Najatar, if I was truly a current content enthusiast, I would be doing Najatar things. Like grinding mana pearls or trying to get to Exalted. Um, and I do want to get to Exalted for that sweet looking manta ray. It looks so good. Um, but. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, of course I did. Um, 
I flight form when, because it's convenient and instant, but when I'm flying long distances, I like to mount up on my pre patch event hippogriff. And I always wanted a hippogriff for my druid, and eventually I went and I did the grind to get the um, freaking Scenarian Circle war hippogriff. But as you can see, that's quite graphically outdated. And the thing I like about this mount is you can get it in the pre-patch during the burning of Teldrassil, which is relevant to my character's story because I write stories for my characters because I'm lame. Uh, no, I'm not lame. I'm really cool and creatively independent. Um, <laughs> sorry, a bit of mental gymnastics going on there. Um, wait, why am I doing this? This isn't a Nazarite quest. Oh, well, we're here now. Uh, <laughs> but also, the reason I like that mount is because it's unobtainable now and I kind of have a thing for mounts which are limited time obtainable and then you can't get it. I know it's really Enemy dumb, it's kind of mean because I'm like hey look what I've got and what you can never have if you ask about it. Um, but I don't know, it's just a little thing in my brain that's like that's so cool, no one can get this! <laughs> it doesn't apply to store purchase mounts and stuff like that though if I ever did try and pull that one so uh... If they made a Someone's store power from mount, in this like, area. only purchasable for free mounts and then never again, I, I I wouldn't be like, I've got to get it! Although I don't have the same frothing at the mouth hatred of store mounts that apparently 90% of the community does. Good lord. That was a whole Reddit thread, wasn't it? Only they were using the uh, you need to stop browsing Reddit. <laughs> it's a cesspit. Anyway. <laughs> We need to get back to Magni. And he... I know I'm flying. I don't mean to be flying. I just mean to be hovering. I'm sorry, game. Oh yes, I'm pacified. Um, yeah, go to Magni. And then we'll figure out what to do afterwards. Because I don't feel like doing any 8.2.0 stuff. I thought I was going to say 2.5, but that's not out yet. <laughs> um, oh, stretch. I'm stretching. What's this happening? Oh, construction. How's the sound of my chair nearly breaking because it's old? Also, I think I overstretched and now my back hurts. Motherfuck. My legs are really hurting right now, by the way. It hurts to walk. Um, I did my hip in because my niece came over and she's four and she wrapped herself around my leg and I was carrying her around the room because I wanted to be the cool uncle. And then the next day I woke up and I was like, ow! <laughs> uh, and for some reason that pain has moved probably a different pain in a coincidence, whatever. It's moved from my hip to the back of my knee. Not like the back of my knee, knee knee, but like that area um, behind the knee area of the leg. I'm so good at biology. Oh, Magni, that's what we're doing. Should we do more gearless leveling? I guess we could do more gearless leveling. I think we shall do more gearless leveling. Oh. Hmm. Our world needs us, champion. I guess I'll split the VOD in two then. That's what I'll do. <laughs> There's a whole freaking storyline, by the way. Cat, please do not rub on your ear. You, you're going to be in pain. There's a whole storyline with Azerite when you level up, but I don't do enough stuff that levels up my Azerite. So. Oh, there we go, actually. <laughs> Never mind. I leveled up my Azerite and now I've got a new quest. But I'm way behind on this stuff and I've already watched videos basically detailing the story. What should we do? Should we do the quest? Or Seeing as this is the middle of a quest chain, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do some gearless leveling instead. Just because otherwise that doesn't make much sense.